Hi everyone, so we will continue with two dimensional arrays. In the last video that is two dimensional arrays part 1, we have seen what are two dimensional arrays, then how to declare and initialize two dimensional arrays and also compile time and runtime initialization. So today we will continue with two dimensional arrays. So in this video we will learn how to write a program to add two matrices and then how to write a program to subtract two matrices. So first we will learn how to add two matrices. Now before I explain you all the code, I will explain the logic of the code with the help of an example. Now we need to know that we can add two matrices only if they have the same dimensions. That is the number of rows and the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows and columns of the second matrix. Now say for example, we have a 2 by 2 matrix. 2 by 2 matrix meaning number of rows will be 2 and the number of columns will be 2. Now this 2 by 2 matrix cannot be added with a 2 by 3 matrix because we can see that the number of columns are different in both the matrices. So in this case addition won't be possible. We'll take another example. So suppose we have a 2 by 3 matrix. 2 by 3 matrix meaning it will have 2 rows and 3 columns. Now this 2 by 3 matrix can be added with a 2 by 3 matrix because the number of rows and the number of columns are the same, so addition is possible. We will take another example. Now over here, say suppose we have a 2 by 2 matrix. 2 by 2 matrix meaning it will have 2 rows and 2 columns. Now this 2 by 2 matrix can be added with a 2 by 2 matrix because the number of rows and the number of columns are the same in both the matrices. So in this case also addition is possible. So let us see this example. Consider we have a matrix say with two rows and two columns. Now we have already seen in the previous video that a two dimensional array will be represented in the form of a matrix and it will start from the zeroth row and the zeroth column. Now in this case we have two rows so this will be the zeroth row and this will be the first row. Similarly we have two columns over here so these are the two columns. So this will be the zeroth column and this will be the first column. The position over here will be A of 0, 0 because this is the zeroth row and this is the zeroth column. So this position will be of 0, 0. This position will be of 0, 1 because this is the zeroth row. This is the first column. Similarly, this will be 1, 0 because this is the first row and this is the zeroth column. And similarly, this will be A of 1, 1. Now the elements which we have inserted are 10, 20, 30 and 40. So 10 will be stored at A of 0, 0, 20 at A of 0, 1, 30 at A of 1, 0 and 40 at A of 1, 1. Next consider we have another matrix B with two rows and two columns. So this will be the 0th row, this will be the first row, this will be the 0th column and this will be the first column. Now consider we have inserted elements as 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this element 1 will be stored at position B of 0, 0. This element 2 will be stored at position B of 0, 1. This 3 will be stored at position B of 1, 0. And 4 will be stored at B of 1, 1. Now we know that both these matrices, that is matrix A and matrix P, it can be added because both have the same dimensions. That is both have two rows and two columns. Now once we add the two matrices, we need to store the result somewhere, right? As a result, we have taken another matrix which will be named as sum, which will store the sum of both the matrices. Now the dimension of this matrix will be 2 by 2 because when we add a 2 by 2 matrix with another 2 by 2 matrix, the resultant matrix will also have dimensions as 2 by 2. So in order to add the two matrices, we need to add the corresponding elements. That is the element at position A of 0, 0 will be added to the element at position B of 0, 0. That means this 10 will be added to this 1. So at this position we will get 10 plus 1 that is 11. Similarly over here the element at position A of 0, 1 will be added to element at position B of 0, 1. So this 20 will be added to this 2. So at this position we will get 20 plus 2 that is 22. Similarly over here the element at position A of 1 0 will be added to element at position B of 1 0. So we will get 
30 plus 3, so at this position we will get 33. Similarly, this 40 will be added to this 4, so at this position we will get 44. So this is how we add two matrices. So in the code what we will do is that, we will take one two dimensional array, insert element into that two dimensional array, then we will take another two dimensional array, then again insert elements into that two dimensional array, and finally we will add the corresponding elements and store the result in another in the third two dimensional array. So let us see the code. First we write the header file, then the program will start from the main function. Then we have declared all the variables which we will be using in the code. We have declared an integer variable r which will hold the number of rows. Another integer variable c which will hold the number of columns. This variable i and j will be used in the loops. Then we have declared an two dimensional array a. The maximum number of rows is 10 and the maximum number of columns is 10. Then we have declared another two dimensional array named as b. The maximum number of rows is 10 and maximum number of columns is 10. Then we have declared another two dimensional array which is named as sum which will hold the resultant sum of both the matrices. The maximum number of rows for this is 10 and the maximum number of columns is 10. Then we will ask the user to enter the number of rows and columns. Whatever rows the user enters will be stored in this variable r and whatever columns the user enters will be stored in this variable c. Now in this case we are asking the user to enter the number of rows and columns for both the matrices only once. The reason is because we can add two matrices only when they have the same number of rows and columns. As a result we will ask the user to enter number of rows and columns only one for both the matrices. So in this case I suppose user enters R as 2 and C as 2. So that is number of rows is 2 and C columns is 2. So this will explain an example. Next it will ask the user to enter the elements of the first matrix. Now how to enter elements in a two dimensional array. I have already explained in detail in my previous video that is two dimensional arrays part 1. So if you don't know how to enter elements in a two dimensional array. Please see that you will go through the previous video. So here I will just explain in brief. So to enter elements in a two dimensional array we will use a nested for loop. So the outer for loop it will start from i equal to 0. The reason we take i equal to 0 because the row starts from 0. It will go on till i less than r. r will be the number of rows. The inner for loop will start from j equal to 0 because the columns start from 0. It will go on till j less than c where c is the number of columns. So till this condition is satisfied, it will take a value from the user using scanf and store in this array A. So the first matrix which we have taken in this case is matrix A. Now say suppose uh, this is the matrix A. Say user enters 10 at position A of 0, 0, 20 at position A of 0, 1. 30 at 1 0 and 40 at position A of 1 1. Over here we have two rows and two columns because we have taken R as 2 and C as 2. So as a result we have two rows and two columns. So this will be the 0th row, this will be the first row, this will be the 0th column and this will be the first column. Next it will ask the user to enter the elements of the second matrix. So again to enter the elements in the second matrix we will use a nested for loop. So the outer for loop will start from i equal to 0. It will go on till i less than the number of rows. Then the inner for loop will start from j equal to 0. It will go on till j less than the number of columns. So till this condition is satisfied it will take a value from the user using scanf and store in this array b. So the second matrix which we will take is this matrix B. So consider this as the matrix B. Say suppose user enters this element 1 at position B of 0 0, element 2 at position B of 0 1, element 3 at position B of 1 0 and 4 at position B of 1 1. So in this case also the number of rows is 2 and columns is 2. As a result we have 2 rows and 2 columns. Now next we need to add the two matrices 
and store the result in another matrix. So we will store the result in a matrix known as sum. So in this case also we will use a nested for loop. So the outer for loop will start from i equal to 0 because rows start from 0. It will go on till i less than r where r is the number of rows. Then the inner for loop will start from j equal to 0 because the columns start from 0. It will go on till j less than c where c is the number of columns. So till this condition is satisfied, it will take a value from matrix A and add it with the corresponding element of matrix B. After adding, it will store the result in the matrix sum and finally it will print the result of from this matrix sum. So let us see this for loop with the help of an example. First we initialize i value to 0 and then we check if i less than r. So over here we have initialized i value to 0 and then we are checking if 0 less than 2. The reason we take if 0 less than 2 is because i value is 0 and r value is 2. So 0 is less than 2 the condition is satisfied. So this condition is satisfied. So it will execute the inner for loop. Now inside the inner for loop first it will initialize j value to 0 and then check if j is less than c. So first j is initialized to 0 and then it will check if 0 is less than 2. We take 2 the reason is because c value is 2. So this condition is satisfied. So if this condition is satisfied it will execute these two statements. The first statement is sum of ij is equal to a of ij plus b of ij. So it will add the elements at the position a of ij and b of ij and store it at the position sum of ij. Now in this case at, uh, at this iteration i value is 0 and j value is 0. So we will get sum of 0 0 equal to a of 0 0 plus b of 0 0. A of 0, 0, the value at position A of 0, 0 is 10 and the value at position B of 0, 0 is 1. So we will get 10 plus 1 that is 11. So this 11 will be stored at position sum of 0, 0. After this statement, we have a printf statement that it will print the element at sum of ij. Now i and j value is 0, 0, so it will print the element at position sum of 0 0. The value at position sum of 0 0 is 11 so it will print this 11 over here. After that it will after it finishes executing these two statements it will increment the j value so j value will become 1. So again it will check for this condition whether if 1 less than 2 1 is less than 2 condition is satisfied. So we will get sum of 0, 1, 0, 1 because i value is 0, j value is 1. So sum of 0, 1 will be a of 0, 1 plus b of 0, 1. Value at position a of 0, 1 is uh, 20 and value at position b of 0, 1 is 2. So we will get 20 plus 2 equal to 22. So this 22 will be assigned to position sum of 0, 1. And finally we will print the value at this position that is 22 will get printed. Again after it finishes executing these two statements it will increment the j value so j value will become 2 so it will check for this condition again if 2 is less than 2. 2 is not less than 2 so the inner loop will terminate so this inner loop will terminate. Now we can see that once the inner loop terminate we have calculated this sum for this 0th row so the value that is 11 and 22 has been calculated for the 0th row. So after this we have a printf statement that is we print a slash n. So we will print a slash n over here after this for loop. The reason we print a slash n is because we need to print the elements in the form of a matrix. That is after it finishes executing uh, sorry finishes printing elements of one particular row the next element should be printed on the next line. Otherwise, if you don't put this slash n, the elements will be printed in a straight line. So as a result, we have put this slash n over here so that it prints in the form of a matrix. So after this iteration, we can see that elements of the 0th row has been printed.
so after the inner loop terminates it will increment the outer for loop that is i value will become 1 then it will check if 1 less than 2 1 is less than 2 condition is satisfied so inner for loop will start from 0 again so j will be initialized to 0 it will check if 0 is less than 2 0 is less than 2 condition is satisfied so it will calculate sum of 1 0 sum of 1 0 will be a of 1 0 plus b of 1 0 so we will get 30 plus 3 that is 33 and then it will print the sum that is it will print 33 then again j value will increment j value will become 1 it will check if 1 is less than 2 1 is less than 2 again condition is satisfied so it will calculate sum of 1 1 as 40 plus 4 that is 44 and finally print the sum then again j value will become 2 now 2 is not less than 2 so the inner for loop will terminate once the inner for loop terminates we can see that the elements of the first row has been printed and finally it will print a slash n after the inner loop terminates again the outer for loop will increment so i value will become 2 now 2 is not less than 2 so the uh, this for loop this entire nested for loop will end finally we have written this return zero statement here because we have written int main so if asked for exams you'll just need to write this code this explanation i have given so that you'll understand the code So the output of the code will be first it will ask the user to enter the number of rows and columns. I have entered R as two and C as two. Then it will ask the user to enter the elements of the first matrix. I have entered as ten, twenty, thirty, and forty. Then again it will ask the user to enter elements of second matrix. I have entered at one, two, three, and four. And finally it will print the sum that is eleven, twenty-two, thirty-three, and forty-four. That is the addition of the corresponding elements. So next we will see how to subtract two matrices. Now the code is similar to matrix addition, but only difference is that instead of plus sign we have put a minus sign over here. Now the rules will be same. That is, we can subtract two matrices only if they have the same dimension. So we cannot subtract a two by two matrix from a two by three matrix because the dimensions are different. But you can subtract a two by two matrix from a two by two matrix. Now consider this example. So suppose this is matrix A and this is matrix B. The result we will store in a matrix known as sub. Now over here also we will subtract the corresponding elements. So we will get ten minus one that is nine. Then twenty minus two is eighteen. Then thirty minus three is twenty-seven. And forty minus four is thirty-six. So let us see the code. Now this code is similar to the previous code which we have just seen. but only difference is that instead of sum we have declared an two dimensional array known as sub and inside this for loop we are not adding the two matrices but we are subtracting the two matrices so first we write the header file then the program will start from the main function then we'll declare all the variables which will be using in the code then we'll ask the user to enter the number of rows and columns then it will ask the user to enter elements of the first matrix the elements of the first matrix will be stored in this two dimensional array a using a nested for loop then it will ask the user to enter elements of the second matrix the elements of this second matrix will be stored in this two dimensional array b using nested for loop then using this nested for loop it will subtract the corresponding elements of these two arrays that is array a and b and store it in array sub and then print the elements of this array sub we have written this print slash n over here so that it prints in the form of a matrix finally we have written this return zero statement because we have written int main over here so the output of the code will be first it will ask the user to enter number of rows and columns i have entered 2 and 2 that is rows will be 2 and columns will be 2 Then we will ask the user to enter elements of the first matrix. I have entered ten, twenty, thirty, and forty. Then it will ask the user to enter elements of second matrix. I have entered one, two, three, four. Finally, it will print the subtraction of the entered matrices. That is ten minus one, twenty minus two, thirty minus three, and forty minus four. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we will learn how to transpose a matrix.